in South Wales coastal hotspots that everyone goes charging off to are Gower and Pembrokeshire. On the way after crossing the Severn Bridge is the Glamorgan Coast, popular with locals but often missed by visitors from further afield. Mention the Glamorgan Heritage Coast back at home and they don't know where it is. Leave M4 Motorway at Bridge End, Junction 35, and head for Ogmore by Sea. Not my highlight, but likely to be signposted from the A473 and 48. By the way, I went by train. Don't miss the highlights on the way. UNE Priory, Merthyr and Ogmore Castle. Uini Priory is one of the finest examples of a fortified religious building in Britain, but suffered during the dissolution of the monasteries when it was converted into a private house. Today, the church nave serves as a parish church, and you are in good company, as it was painted by Turner in 1795 at the beginning of his brilliant career. Crossing Ogmore River, I approached the castle via Merthyr Moor. Like the Priory, Ogmore Castle is a Grade 1 listed building, in the care of Cadu, and free to enter. Its construction was thought to have begun in 1106, and was one of three castles, and in use until the 19th century for a range of purposes, including a prison and court of justice. Today it is in a ruinous state, but ideal for photography. Ogmore by Sea is pleasantly situated on the Glamorgan Heritage Coast, close to the expansive estuary of the Ogmore River, with a coastline stretching beyond Nash Point. Facing the Bristol Channel, the photographer will often find themselves shooting into the light, presenting a number of photographic challenges. Known as crepuscular rays, these beams of light are better known as angel rays. They radiate from the sun's position by shining through breaks in clouds. Witnessing them is a classic case of the photographer arriving at a beautiful location at the right time, and shower clouds driven up the Bristol Channel by a strong wind help. But photo technique is not far behind, and just as essential for grabbing the right shot. A high dynamic range is the big problem, and difficult to get the exposure spot on. Blown out highlights are difficult to avoid. Now my trick is to under, yes, under expose, but save to raw, that is essential, and then adjust in post-production, and that is what you see here in my images. Spot metering with the help of an electronic finder makes it easier to judge the best exposure. And although frowned upon, I use F16 when using a zoom to avoid flare, a degradation of the image in my opinion worse than diffraction caused by a small aperture. But I leave it up to you to choose. The problem of flare is not so acute at F11 or 8 with a prime lens. I walked the coast path to Dunraven Bay, which is popular at certain times. Nature provided the amazing wave and rock patterns, and before the beach did get busy, I tried some further dramatic contour shots. Throughout the two-day shoot, I handheld the EM5 with its kit lens, the 12 to 50 zoom. Support courtesy of two stout legs. Not suitable, I'm afraid, for public exhibition. Surely an underrated combination of its time. 
That is the camera and lens, by the way, not my legs, as I hope these images prove.